So these are eight common problems that you see in surveys and questionnaires for theses and uh, dissertations. So if you don't know me, I'm an associate professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out that I want to pay the favor for it and help you out. All right, so doing surveys and questionnaires are really tricky for most of us. And if you watched a couple of the other videos as part of a series I was doing on surveys and questionnaires and the problems and things that you should do in terms of you know navigating or that you should take care of in terms of navigating and doing really good research. So I decided to do a quick video on eight common problems on surveys and questionnaires for uh, dissertations. So. With that, uh, you know, here are some eight common problems that you're going to see with all sorts of research that are involving surveys and questionnaires. First one is a common method bias, and you could look that up in the psychology literature. And really what it is, it's, it's identifying the fact that if you are sampling the same or doing the same kind of procedure or sampling the same uh, uh, in the same way or you're sampling a, a person and you're getting both the independent and dependent variables from the same source, you could get a problem because the construct's being measured in the same same sort of way. And what you're picking up is not the fact that you're, you're picking up on the construct, the thing that you're actually trying to measure, but you're picking up on variance uh, due to the instruments or due to the uh, technique that you're actually using, rather than thinking about you know, are you actually picking up the constructs? The second thing you're gonna see is a low response rate. That's gonna be kind of a killer. So you gotta make sure that your response rate's pretty good. And you can watch my last video where I talked about getting response rates up. And I think that's gonna be an important thing for you um, because it suggests that there is a sample selection um, bias or a possible one that's there. And you have to um, ensure that you have good response rates as well as testing to make sure that you don't have any sort of sample selection problems that's that's going on within the data. So uh, a third thing that you might see is um, single response bias. And you're going to see this a lot if you're doing anything on organizations or groups or anything like that that involves more than one response. And so what you're looking for is a triangulation. And so good research is actually really hard to do on organizations, for example, because you might want to triangulate by, you know, two or three individuals that are coming from an organization or, you know, from a single group or something along those lines. Or, you know, maybe you're trying to triangulate at some sort of construct about an individual. Well, you might want to ask both the individual, but the parents as well and get a triangulation of the same construct based on that. So you're trying to, you know, get a real good sense of what that thing is uh, before you sort of nail down and before, because what really comes back to this common method bias problem again, right? So you're picking up on the single thing that uh, that you're sampling on, you're not really getting more information on this construct because there's, there's many ways to skin a cat, there's many ways to measure something, that's what you should be looking at is trying to triangulate this thing as much as you possibly can, that construct that you're trying to look at. Um, another thing that's that's important is boredom and disinterested bias. Sorry, I'm laughing because my, my doggie Izzy is over there. She's kind of making some noises. It's funny. Um, all right, so uh, you might have boredom or disinterested biases where people just get really bored when they're taking the survey. If anything's longer than 10 minutes, you're going to get boredom. Um, effects in there. So what you might want to do is interject uh, after a certain number of questions, you might interject some sort of silly check, a manipulation check of some sort where you ask a silly question where you're testing whether they're actually paying attention. Because what people are going to tend to do is go, you know, yes, 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 or, you know, um, you know, extremely likely, extremely likely, extremely likely, and just respond in that sort of way. So you might want to interject something that is kind of silly or you know some sort of silly question or maybe it is you know do reverse coding every once in a while so it keeps people on their toes but be careful with reverse coding because that is cognitively di difficult to sort of process and people are might not pay attention to it so just you know interject something in there to do a manipulation check and if you do find that people are just going yes 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 they're going to click on that thing where maybe you ask you know are you paying attention and if they click 
uh, or you know click the middle um, observation or middle um, range if you're paying attention if they click yes 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 and they click you know one side um, then you could throw out that 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 observation because you know they're not paying attention at all right so uh, another thing is you might you're definitely gonna get problems with ill-defined constructs so this is a huge thing with surveys surveys and, and scales are so well defined at this moment they're so there, there is this huge methodology in terms of construct validation, which you should really take a look at. Um, and, and so if you're not clear on what your constructs are, if you're not clear, clear on your, your theory, you're really gonna get hammered. And it's just gonna be really hard to get a paper published or you know get anything done with this thing. So just be very careful about that. Um, you know, a sixth thing that I think is really important, and people forget about this, is that they assume when they're writing it up, writing up the results, they use a lot of causal language, like this causes this, um, you know, if this happens, that happens, or behavioral language that people actually changed when they did this, but that's not the case. What you're measuring with surveys is beliefs, and you're measuring, you know, correlations for the most part within the survey, unless you're actually doing something where you're changing somebody's, you're getting them to do something, and, and there is, you know, uh, um, you know, some sort of change within the the survey. Like you're actually seeing a physical behavioral change, which is most surveys are not going to do that, and so it's going to be a little tricky. Um, that's where you might want to do maybe some sort of experimentation and surveys. I'm not going to get into that, but there's definitely ways to do that. Um, you can do so. Another thing that you're going to see. So a seventh thing you're going to see is a lack of control variables. So a lot of people will forget to ask demographic um, questions at the end. So normally you want to ask demographic questions at the end because you want to get people fresh. And that demogra demographic stuff is, you know, it, it, it's just really boring and, and you might not get any, um, you, know, you just get people bored in, with doing the survey. And, um, you know, if you ask a demog demographic question or some sort of, you know, question that is a little risky might get people dropping out. So you want to just ask the important stuff at the beginning um, and sort of ease people into what you're really interested in really quickly. Um, so, you know, you, you ask things about gender, age, um, you know, gender is an interesting one these days. So just be careful with that, right? It's not binary anymore. Uh, we have to be very aware that it's not binary, so you might want to make sure that you have an other with gender, you know, age, um, you know, what else is there? All the other sort of demographic variables like race and things like that, you have to be, um, you know, well aware of them. And there's standards that are out there that you can use. Um, which one of the ones that I think is really weird, uh, and, and I'm just going to put it out there, the one that's sort of standard in the United States, instead of saying Caucasian, they call it white. I don't think that was really weird, but whatever. Um, another thing is for, uh, you know, the last one is problems with level of analysis. So this is my eight, uh, is, is problems with level of analysis in that people get uh, things mixed up with their constructs. So they're, they're, they're maybe theorizing about something that's happening in an organization, but then they measure it via individuals or they measure it uh, based on individuals' opinions and they should be really looking at organizations and really trying to figure out what's going on within the organization. So those level of analysis thing is really important. And you can capture some of those things by doing aggregate measures or asking specifically about an organization rather than the individual themselves. So with that, there's eight common problems as surveys and questionnaires. Uh, for thesis C's and, and dissertations. So uh, check out the other videos, check out all my other videos. Give me a thumbs up, do subscribe to the YouTube channel. All right, take care, bye.